Welcome to my channel IGCSE Chemistry. In this video, we are going to solve code six two zero, paper two, variant one, May June, two thousand twenty, exam part one. Cambridge IGCSE exam 620 paper 2 variant 1 May June 2020 the duration for paper 2 is 45 minutes question number 1 a mixture of ice and water is left to stand and the ice melts which row describes what happens to the ice as ice is melting Temperature of mixture, energy changes. As the heating curve shows that during the process of melting, the temperature remains constant. It means that when solid is turning into liquid, during the melting phase, temperature stays the same. Of melting, the temperature of mixture, there is no change in the temperature of mixture and energy is used to overcome attractive forces. So D is the correct answer. Question number two, which piece of apparatus should be used to measure exactly 21.4 cubic centimeters of water? Here the measurement is up to one decimal point and to measure something up to one decimal point, burette is used and burette measures with more accuracy so correct answer is c 50 cubic centimeters burette question number three the chromatogram for unknown dye is shown solvent front the distance traveled by solvent front is 12 centimeters and this is the spot of dye and distance traveled by spot of dye is 9 centimeters. What is the RF value of the dye? How to calculate RF value? Distance traveled by component divided by distance traveled by solvent. The distance traveled by dye divided by distance traveled by solvent front. So correct answer is C 0.75. RF value has no unit. Question number 4. The atomic number and nuclear number of potassium atom are shown. Atomic number, number of protons are 19. Nuclear number, the total number of protons and neutrons are 39. How many Protons, neutrons and electrons are in potassium ion. K positive. Because it is having plus charge, it is showing that it has lost one electron. It means from the total number of electrons, you have to minus one electron. So now potassium ion has 19 protons as shown by atomic number. 20 neutrons as shown by 39 minus 19 and electrons are 18 because it has lost one electron. So A is the correct answer. Question 5. The electronic structures of two atoms P and Q are shown. P and Q combine together to form a compound. What is the type of bonding in the compound and what is the formula of the compound? Here we see the electronic structure of P and Q. P has 2 electron in the first shell and 7 electron in the second shell. And Q has 
electronic configuration like 2 comma 1. It shows that P belongs to group 7 and valency of P is minus 1. Q belongs to group 1 and valency is plus 1. As the valencies are same, so they will be cancelled out because valencies are balancing each other and it shows that P is non-metal and Q is metal, metal from group 1 and P is non-metal from group 7. So type of bonding that exists between metal and non-metal is ionic and formula will be PQ. Question number 6. Which row contains a description of metallic bonding and a property that is explained by reference to metallic bonding? What is metallic bonding? Metallic bonding shows that a lattice of positive ions in a sea of mobile electrons. It means we have to choose from C and D option because it is a lattice of positive ions. Then we will see which property relates with its metallic bonding. This property a metal react with an acid producing hydrogen It is a chemical property. A piece of metal can be molded into different shapes. This is the property due to its metallic bonding. So correct answer will be D. Question number 7. Which statement explains why methane has low boiling point than water? Let us see the answer. Option A. Methane has weaker covalent bond than water. Option B. Methane has weaker attractive forces than water. C. Methane molecules are heavier than water molecules and methane molecules have more bonds than water molecules. The lower boiling point of methane is actually due to weaker attractive forces than water. So correct answer will be B. Because both methane and water are bonded by covalent bond, but it is not that methane has weaker covalent bond. It should be methane has weaker attractive forces than water. Question number 8. A solution of iron sulfate reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a red brown precipitate. What is the balanced equation including state symbols for the reaction? First of all, you should notice that here is a solution. It means you have to choose the one which is having aqueous in the formula. Iron sulfate aqueous, iron sulfate aqueous. It means that we will neglect the option B and D. Second thing is that you have to see which one is the correct balanced equation. If you notice that iron 3 sulfate. Iron 3 sulfate means iron has valency plus 3. Iron has plus 3 charge. Sulfate has minus 2 charge. Crossover. And formula is Fe2 SO4 thrice. So correct answer is option C. The Heber process, question number 9, the Heber process is a reversible reaction. Nitrogen plus 3 moles of hydrogen make 2 moles of ammonia by reversible reaction. The reaction has 30% yield of ammonia. This information is very important. We have to consider in the question, which volume of ammonia gas measured at room temperature and pressure is obtained by reacting 0.75 moles of hydrogen with excess nitrogen. 
to calculate volume of gases the formula is number of moles times 24 24 is the molar volume of gases at room temperature and pressure the ratio between hydrogen and ammonia moles is 3 ratio 2 we can find out 0 0.75 moles of hydrogen will make x moles of ammonia so number of moles of ammonia is equal to by cross multiplication we can find out x moles Two times zero point seven five divided by three is equal to zero point five moles of ammonia. To calculate volume, number of moles times molar volume, so zero point five times twenty four. In this step, we have to find out thirty percent yield of the volume. That's why we have multiplied 12,000 volume times 30 by 100. This step is very important because here you have to calculate 30% of the total yield of ammonia. That's why we have multiplied volume with 30% or 30 by 100. First, we have converted the volume into cubic centimeters as per the answer required. You can see the answer is in cubic centimeters. So, correct answer is option A, 3600 cubic centimeters. Question number 10, dilute aqueous sodium chloride is electrolyzed using platinum electrodes. What is the half equation for reaction at cathode? In this question, you know they are talking about cathode. Cathode is the negative electrode and at cathode reduction takes place. Reduction means the gain of electrons. And negative electrode, it means only the positive electrons, positive ions will be attracted to the cathode. So, we will choose from only positive ions option A and option B. The word dilute shows that it is an aqueous solution of sodium chloride. It means it has two types of positive ions, hydrogen and sodium ions. But sodium ions are not discharged. Sodium is a reactive metal that is why instead hydrogen ions will be discharged and they will gain electrons at cathode. So, correct answer is option A. Question number 11. The electrolysis of aqueous copper 2 sulphate using inert electrodes is shown. Which statement about a reaction at an electrode is correct? Option A, copper ions gain electrons at negative electrode. Option B, copper ions gain electrons at the positive electrode. Option C, hydrogen ions gain electrons at the negative electrode. Option D, hydrogen ions gain electrons at the positive electrode. The question shows that there is aqueous copper 2 sulphate solution. It means that there are two types of ions in this aqueous solution. Two types of positive ions are copper ions and hydrogen ions. When we compare the reactivity of these two ions, copper ions are least reactive. That's why they will discharge at negative electrode. Hydrogen ions will not discharge. Copper ions will discharge at negative electrode and they will gain electrons or reduction will happen. So, correct answer is option A. Copper ions gain electrons at negative electrode. Question number 12. 
the equation for the complete combustion of methane gas is shown. What is the overall energy change in kilojoule per mole for the above reaction? Here we will calculate energy required to break the bonds. First, methane has 4 bonds of CH4 and there are 2 moles of oxygen. We will calculate the bond energy accordingly. And calculate the energy released when new bonds are formed. There are double bonds between carbon and oxygen and CO2 contains 2 such bonds and there are 2 moles of water. So, total OH bonds will be 4. Bond energy value calculate looking from the table. and you get the energy released when new bonds are formed. Delta H or energy change is equal to energy required to break the bonds minus energy released when new bonds are formed. The answer is minus 694 kilojoule per mole. So, correct option is option B. Question 13. Which statements about hydrogen fuel cells are correct? Option number 1, water is formed as the only waste product. Option 2, both water and carbon dioxide are formed as waste products. Option 3, the overall reaction is 2H2 plus O2 make 2H2O. Fourth option, the overall reaction is endothermic. Number 1, water is formed as the only waste product. This option is correct. Second option is wrong because there is no carbon dioxide. Third option is also correct because the overall reaction is 2H2 plus O2 make 2H2O. Fourth option, the overall reaction is endothermic. This process produces energy and it does not require heat energy. Therefore, fourth option is wrong. So, correct answer will be A, 1 and 3. Question 14. Which diagram represents a chemical change? Chemical change means formation of a new substance by chemical combination. So, option D is the correct answer. Question number 15. The rate of reaction between calcium carbonate chips and hydrochloric acid is studied by collecting the volume of gas released in one minute at different temperatures. Which statement fully explains why increasing the temperature has this effect on the rate? Particles increases, so collisions are harder. Collisions are harder, this is wrong. Option 2 collision between particles increase? Answer is not complete. Option 3, the activation energy needed for the particles to react is reduced. Here catalysts are not used. So, this is not the right option. Last option is, there are more frequent collision between the particles with enough energy to react. This is the correct option. If you like my video please like subscribe and share the video with your friends thank you so much i hope you have learned a lot from the video